and welcome everyone to a new video. We are going karting today. <laughs> Multi-class karting, just like Le Mans. And it's going to be a tough one, it's a heat wave today, it's about 35 degrees. We're going to be racing for over an hour, so the race is going to be an hour. It's going to be tough, I'm going to be losing a lot of fluids and, you know, coping with losing weight. And I'm going to be recording it for you, so if you like this video, if you like the karting club, please, please, please make sure you like and make sure you subscribe. Because if you guys and girls really like this stuff, I want to do more of it and I can um, you know, buy some nicer equipment and we can do some cool stuff. So here we go, one hour at Sandown Park, multi -class. You can see here the sign. Let's go, let's do it. So I had no idea this race was going to be so aggressive, so intense. This is the most aggressive karting race and the best karting race I've had for such a long time. I really, really, really enjoyed this. This race has absolutely everything. So you see me here, we're going to join us for our qualifying lap and it is a super pole session, which means we get the whole track to ourselves for our flying laps. You can see here doing some half assed warming up of the tyres. The reality is that I'm one of the last carts to go out. My car is ice cold, but the track is hot. It's a really hot day, so this is not good conditions. Just so you know, my fastest lap around Dayton Sandown Park is 50 seconds flat, 50.0. But it's going to be very difficult to get anywhere close to that here. So I'm just trying to feel out the car on this out lap. Now, I do have to say, because I'm in the heavyweight category of the slowest category of carts, qualifying is not super, super, super important for me. I'm going to be starting near the back anyway. It's just where I can start. I am second in the championship. My championship rival, the leader of the championship, is racing today. So it's a mano we mano against him. I do want to try and beat him and uh, start to make a claim to perhaps lead this championship. But here we go. Around the last corner, I'll talk you through the lap. So going on to the start finish rate, it's a great feeling. This isn't something you get in sim racing. When you look down the beginning of a start finish line, you see the heat haze, you see turn one, you want to go for it. It's an incredible feeling. Absolutely flat a lot of the time into turn one, depending on your tyres. I doubt we were on this quality lap just because the tyres don't have that grip. Breaking here and trying to hug the white line to maximise the entry for this critical corner here. The curbs are a lot flatter than they used to be, so you can really cut more of that. And then this left-hander is very, very, very tricky. It's hard to really judge your breaking point. The corner goes on for a very long time. And we enter into this right-hander that's uphill, very tight, uphill right-hander where you can use a lot of momentum. Now onto the short back straight, we're going to break where the tire mat changes colour. Here we go. And again, you want to be trying to cut as much that right-hand side as possible. Easy flat through his left-hander, and then it's going to be the very important last corner. Try and get on the power as early as possible, but don't run into the tyres on the left-hand side. So we're going to go over the line. It is going to be a 52 dead. That is two whole seconds slower than my fastest lap at this circuit. That shows you just what a difference it makes when you've got cold tyres and the track's hot. Unbelievable, really. Full tank is full as well. Right, let's go to the starting grid, and let's see how this is going to work. So... We are in the heavyweight category of the Sodi class. You can see the fast cars just going off there already. The D-Maxes, the two-stroke D-Maxes. We're in the four-stroke Sodis. And the lay of the land is the guy on my left-hand side in the blue uh, Sodi cart with the yellow helmet. He is the championship leader. He is my rival. Seems to be quite a nice guy. We chat every time we go out. And the last race, in a 30-minute race, he beat me by five seconds. So that's where we are. The guy ahead of me, I know is a heavyweight, and I'm assuming... The two carts behind me are heavyweights as well. So that makes five of us here. I think five of us are going for the podium. So five needs to go into three if we want to get a podium. And it's an amazing start by myself here. I've already overtaken the championship lead. I've just followed this guy with number six cart, which was a big surprise to me. I tend not to have great starts and wrong starts, but absolutely fantastic. Might even think about going up the inside here, but it's not quite going to work. He tries to go up the inside of me as well. So I switched hat to be a bit more defensive, but what a start this is for me. And we're going to get a position here potentially up the inside. And he's looking, he's looking, he's looking. Will I go for a dive anyway? Yes, we do. And just slot in the car. Oh, but we're going to lose it back. I've sure, got to make sure I get to the right hand side. Looks like the championship leader got into a squabble there. So this is unbelievably good news for me because I can now sort of control the pace with the championship leader. Yes, I might be not doing as well in terms of the overall heavyweight... Um, standings for this particular race but in terms of the championship this could be huge so you can see here going down the start finish straight i'm going to try and tuck in are we going to get anywhere near 50 miles now the sodi car is actually faster down the straight i believe when i've been looking at my gps analysis got some videos now on my channel i think these carts are actually faster 
down the straight, which is unbelievable. But they are slower in the corner. They're heavier. The full stroke takes a bit of time to get going. If you, th if you want to compare it to Le Mans, we're in the GT3 cars. And uh, the DMATS cars are definitely the LMP2s. So this was a big moment for me. Now, previously in the championship, as a heavyweight, I've seen a lot of cars, all the lightweight cars, just get away from me. And even some other heavyweights sometimes just get away from me. But in this race here, it's pretty clear, right? You can see these three cars ahead are not getting away from us. The combination of my driving and the parity of the car in this instance mean that I know we're going to have a battle here. And at this point, honestly, when I was driving up thinking, oh, 60 minute race, 35, 36 degree heat, that's going to be tough. But right now, I cannot tell you, I'm like a dog wagging its tail. This is absolutely great. I've got 60 minutes of this to try and see if I can basically beat these three drivers ahead. And even the guy at the front of this pack doesn't seem like he's getting away that much. So I was super, super, super happy about this. Maybe I've got quite a decent car today. I haven't had particularly good luck recently at Daytona, but that's the way it works. You have a bad hand one week, you get a good hand the next week, maybe. So I'm kind of sizing up this pack, just move out here. Um, just to sort of get in a flow. The guy ahead obviously doesn't know that I've moved out. It's not going to intimidate him. It's just kind of me getting in the groove, getting used to kind of sweeping out and making that move. Championship leader behind us got back into it. And uh, he's all over the back of us. You can see him dipping. We're both dipping our heads here as heavyweights. We want to kind of minimise the amount of drag we have down the straight. And uh, coming into this very, very, very fast turn one. Tires are going to struggle. Oh, whoa, bit of contact, bit of contact. He puts his hand up. And I am not happy. We were nudged into that braking zone there. Just a little bit of contact. And because we're so on the edge and everything isn't quite warmed up, that is an absolute calamity. And I'm fuming. You know, how would you be feeling there? We were setting up for such a nice race. But don't worry. Don't worry. I was fuming so much. I went into absolute beast mode here. So we're going to get past this guy. And I'm going to zoom ahead because you can see now... We're going to lose. If we go over long, we'll see how many seconds we've lost in this lap. I think it's probably going to be about four, five, six seconds. It feels like a lot more. It feels like a lot more. We're going over the line. 51.6 the previous lap. This is going to be a 56. We lost five seconds. But I'm going to zoom forward and we're going to be back with that pack. So yes, as I promised, we've now caught up with that pack again. And it was blood, sweat and tears. It's a 60 minute race. You should be kind of conserving your energy. But I honestly was going 110%. I was really, really, really pushing myself. If you have a look at the consistencies there, 51-1, 51-5, 51-1, 51-4, 51-4. I was really, really, really pushing it. All of those laps significantly faster than my quality lap. And we've really arrived. And you know when you, if you're watching and you're someone who races in real life or in sim racing, you know when you arrive at pace... You just, you kind of arrive with such momentum. That was a little bit of a naughty move there, if you saw. You might want to go back, have a look. I gently, gently, gently podded that guy through. That is a very naughty move. Uh, it wasn't intentional, but as you're going to see, I perhaps should have done more of that going forward. I wasn't waving him through there, my hand signal. I was trying to say the two of us, let's work together. These people may not have noticed me coming, and they may be thinking, how the hell is this guy caught up? Um... If they would have seen me um, being spun out. In this meantime, by the way, the championship leader has got ahead of this group. And what I've noticed is this guy in the black suit and the grey helmet. You can see his partner here on the back in the orange dress. She was really cheering him on. This guy defends like an absolute lion. He's defending against D-Maxes here. You see the D-Maxes coming through. This is the multi-class chaos. But this guy in the black suit and the grey helmet. I want you... If you're watching this, I really... Oh, we go up the inside here. Nice move by us. I really, 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 really want you to let me know what do you think about us defending. Because sim racing is one thing, but this is real life. This is, you know, this is the real world. So honestly, let me know what you think about some of this defending. I can already tell he's a very defensive driver because he's looking over his shoulder a lot. In this race, I don't look over my shoulder once. And this guy is always looking over his shoulder... So I'm thinking at this point, okay, I'm going to use this to my advantage. I'm going to take him this way. I'm going to take him that way. I'm going to delve into my football skills, do a few kind of step overs, feints, and uh, make him think I'm going to be somewhere and then go the other. I try something here a little bit. So I, th I tried to make him think I was on the outside and it came through. It didn't quite work. Again here, he's looking over. He's got the neck of an owl, this man. We've got a D-Max behind. He just can't get a three because we're squabbling so much. And 
I really sense opportunity at this point because I thought that I needed to get past this guy to get on the podium. Because it seems pretty obvious now that this guy is a heavyweight because he's mixing it with us. All the lightweights will have gone down, gone, um, gone further down the grid now. Lost a lot of time there because of the DMATs. But again, what comes around goes around. And he loses time now. So we're going to get a nice little stream here. I've got my head down. You can see the top there how low my head is. And we're going 47, 40, oh, just 47 because he had to lift off a little bit there. There is a lot of defensive driving. He hugs the inside here, nowhere to go. So I open up the corner, thinking about some momentum. Might be able to dive up the inside, but we just can't quite do it. He positions the car in the middle of the circuit. Get a really nice exit here. Going to try and go up the inside, but he goes defensive. I thought that was a little bit naughty, a little bit of a late move. And again here, kind of half think about it. And now this is, remember I talked about that move I did earlier on the guy in the white suit where I gently made contact? It's a very naughty move, and in Club 100, I think that would be a full position penalty. In Daytona and these Sodies, it's, as you're going to see, it's a bit more rough and tumble. So maybe I should have been more ruthless and just be making a bit more gentle contact with him. Not punting him, but just letting him know I'm there. Just if he's being defensive, just kind of squeezing him. So again, down the straight, he's very much in the middle of the circuit. Goes left, then kind of stays in the middle. That's fine. I wouldn't say there's any double movement there. And I'm going to try and go up the inside here. Here we go. And you can see there, that was a very late squeeze in my opinion. I'm getting quite heated here under the helmet. And again, a better exit. He goes left-hand side. He's now in the middle. I go left, and I think he goes left again. But, you know, I'm, at this stage, I'm, I've really lost my call. Cool. And in fact, I'm going to lose a position here. So the guy behind, this guy in the yellow helmet, he's not a championship leader, another guy, was a very, very, very sensible driver, I thought. This guy here in the white suit... Um, was fighting for everything. So that's kind of the dynamic. You've got the guy in the black suit who's a defensive hero. He's like Giorgio Cellini and Maldini and Nesta all combined into one. You've got the guy in the yellow helmet who's playing a bit of a sensible long game, as you're going to see. And then you've got this guy in the white suit who's also very defensive. And I was trying... The, the guy in the white... All three of us, I think, have pace to get past the guy in the black suit. But the fact that we're squabbling so much means we're, we're struggling to do it. See, the yellow guy's going to do a cut back here. And again, that's a very late move. Takes his hands off the wheel to Cygnus' displeasure. And the guy in the white suit is going to go for it. I'll follow him through. But if we just kind of push someone... So we're really squabbling now. My, my worry here was that if I got stuck in a squabble here and, some, and, one of the, and the other driver got past the guy in the black suit, that's it. That person's going to clear off. So that's what I'm really worried about at this stage. Um, so I've kind of settled in here into the back of this pack and i actually took this moment to just sort of really recharge my batteries i've been going hell for leather i was quite hot under the helmet i'm sweating i've got sweat dripping into my eyes um you know into like the, the helmets kind of squeeze your face up and crease it and i've got sweat dripping down all of there it's like it's really 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 uncomfortable so i just sort of took a moment here just to kind of uh, regroup assess the battlefield and then we go again. Let's go again and skip to the next bit. So here we go. I've recharged my batteries and there is just 15 minutes of the race to go as you saw on the board there. And here's the situation. The guy in the black suit has been able to make a break for it. You can see he's just ahead of us there going on start finish now. I've been squabbling with this guy in the white suit so much. We've lost so much time. It's been absolutely unbelievable. As you can see, I'm trying to get up the inside here. I'm trying to find any way through. I'm getting really, really, really frustrated because I know the guy in the black suit is getting away. And the guy in the yellow helmet actually got taken out by d Matt's car. So he's catching us up again. You can see in the rear view. I didn't know at this stage. I just saw he's been taken out. I'm going to try and go around the outside here. Here we have a look. Very difficult to go around the outside there because the guy can just basically squeeze you off as he would have done there if I'd been there. So I didn't know the guy in the yellow helmet's catching us. I thought he was just done. But he's doing the same thing I did. He was, you know, in the absolute zone after being taken out. I really need to get past this guy in the white suit. Remember, I'm thinking if I want to get on the podium, I need to overtake the guy in the black suit. That was what I was fixated by. And he's just there. And I know I've seen it before that I have the pace, but I'm up against yet another roadblock. So my overtaking is just not really up to scratch. You're going to see that my speeds through the first corner are not as fast as they used to be. The tyres now really feel like they've overheated. I'm struggling a little bit as well, but I did definitely notice a lack of the grip. I don't think the brakes were overheating as well, but the car definitely is much more difficult to drive 
a lot more slide now. So go to the inside here, get it done. Are we going to defend against the cutback? He gets us round on the outside, but it's going to be very difficult to come back at us. Here we go. Just put his nose up there, but I'm going to try and defend it. I'm going to put my hand up again, say two of us, let's go. So here we go. Here's a big challenge for me. What can I do now in terms of lap times? The guy in the black suit, is he going to be struggling? There he is. You can see that he's not that far away, maybe four, five seconds. So if I can take, you know, a second a lap out of him, then... Phew, you know, we're going to be right up there. It was just 15 minutes to go and, you know, the time's ticking down. You just don't know, is it 10 minutes now? Then soon it'll be five minutes. And I'm thinking this is such a... What a race it's been. So here comes a D-Max. Whoa! Almost takes me out. I kind of felt something there. But um, now I've got the benefit of the rear view. I can see exactly what it was. You can see the top right, we've got our ghost. Our fastest lap is that purple dot. This is actually a new clip. So our fast lap of the race was, I think, a 51 one or 51 dead and everyone it turned out was a second slower today i think just because of the heat the track was literally a second a lap slower so um the pace for me if you take if you know being a second lap slower is pretty good 51.1 but we want to do a few more laps if possible these d maxes aren't happy they're squabbling and you can see here this is what i didn't see at the time this guy at this moment i'm looking at him like who the hell are you and where have you come from because I thought this guy was absolutely done. And I have to say, this is a really demoralizing moment for me. Because I I was in the stage of the race, I'm thinking, right, I need to do qualifying laps now to, to catch the guy in the grey helmet. And the fact this guy had overtaken me was gen you know, genuinely really demoralized me. But very quickly, I was like, okay, I need to try to stick with this guy. Or even, even if I can't stick with him, he's definitely going to catch the guy in the grey suit at that pace. And they're going to battle and that will allow me to catch up. So that's my thinking now. So you can see how much mentally karting kind of takes that demands of you. It's a very mental thing. There's there's no... I'm not chatting away like I am when I'm streaming. It's just me in the helmet. Sometimes swearing, sometimes screaming. Generally me in the helmet. And that's the racing. By the way, if you are enjoying this, please, please, please. It would make my day if you could just check that you are subscribed. And leave a comment if you want to see more karting videos. I would love to do more of this if they get the tracks on the channel. Karts in the name, guys. Karts in the name. We, we surely we've got to do more of it. So I'm trying my best to stick with this guy in the yellow helmet, but I'm just noticing that he's just a bit better. He's just a bit better, and I was a bit confused by that because I seem to have the pace to match him or even be a bit faster than him early in the race. But right now, he's just doing better. You can see the guy in the, in the white suit as well behind us. He's really sticking with us, ready to pounce. So... I think our pace had just dropped off. You can see by lap time, it's just about at least half a second, which was, um, I think, just the nature of the race, a 60-minute rate in the sea. And it's really, 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 really tough. I've done a lot of 60-minute racing before, done a lot of endurance racing, and I've done racing in the heat, but it's sort of the toughest thing to do. And if you're watching and going karting and it's very hot, I was about to interrupt because the guy in the white suit overtakes me, and I, again, I was not expecting that. So that was kind of like, you know in movies where someone gets shot and they fall to their knees and they're like, what's happened? And then they get shot again. That was like me getting shot again. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to leave absolutely nothing on the table now. I don't even care if I need to get dragged out of this cart. I'm just going to give everything. So I'm, I'm determined. I am not going to let this guy in the white suit get away from us. You can see there's no contact sign there on the board. So, you know, it's all he heating up somewhere. The race at the top of D-Max was very, very, very close, by the way. There was a lot of bad blood in the Sodis, as, as you've seen. So really now, I need, need, need to catch up with this guy in the white suit. 47 miles an hour, so we're still hitting 47. Nice bit of slipstream. stream. We just understeer a little bit in this very fast right-hander. We weren't going un um, to understeer before. And you can see here, just can't quite keep to the white line. That's a little bit of fatigue as well. Steering wheel feeling heavy as I'm tired. This guy's putting his head down. Don't really need it here. I said, unless you're going over 40 miles an hour, that's where it makes a difference. But, um, you know, he must be tired as well. I know we're heavyweight rivals. He's not quite getting away from us. But my pace is slow. So what can we do? I'm going to zoom forward a little bit. So it's very close now to the end of the race. And he's just looking over his shoulder. There is a D-Max here with plenty of opportunity. So the D-Max goes through and I'm going to follow him. You can see me there just almost like releasing off the brakes as my brain realises that's my ticket. And we squeeze him a little bit there. So now I've really, 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 really got a drive time and limit. Look how low I'm getting there. Just trying to go and just 
Oh, I really, really, really want to get this. I, I don't think we're going to be on the podium here. But um, it is a championship and every position really does count. So at this point, psychologically, I just kind of want to lay down a really big marker here. Put some big laps in. Just almost to make him think it's not worth fighting. So I'm trying to drive to my absolute best here. Trying to be very poised, very smooth. Trying to take the curb where I can. Just nibbling the curb there. Running to the outside. I'm trying to keep the maximum speed I can through this corner. You don't really just want to hit the apex there because you'll scrub too much speed. Again here, I just want to try and get over the curb as much as possible. That was nice. Open, uping, uh, open up the last corner here. Can we get over the curb? Yes, very, 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 very nice. So what is this lap time going to be? It's going to be... Whoa! That comes in as a 50.6 lap time. So I really, really, really stepped up. A 50.6 for in this heat for me, is that is quite a big lap time. And... Um, it doesn't, you know, look at it so much in the rear view. Remember, he does have slip benefit, but he will have noticed that's a fast lap. So my mission now is just basically to get ahead of this guy and uh, see what happens to the two ahead, because the two ahead have, I think, now caught each other. Let's see as we go around the back straight. Yes, that's the two Sodis there. There really is not a long amount, not a long time to go. I think that was seven minutes on the board. So let's skip ahead right to the end and see what happens. So this is right at the end of the race and my battery is really known now. It's about to run out any second. So we need to find out where it runs out because those two ahead are really squabbling. There is a few laps to go. This is not the last lap. Can we? They're going side by side. You can see side by side. Someone's jumping on the bank. The, the crowd were absolutely loving. Oh! So we run out of battery. Let's see what happened. Let's do the debrief. So the big surprise was the guy in the black suit and the grey helmet, he wasn't in the heavyweights, even though he was the guy we were all trying to get past for the whole 60 minutes. He was a lightweight, so he must have um, just been struggling with the eggs or something. So that means that we did actually finish second in class, which really surprised me. I thought we just finished off the back of the podium there. The, the best thing for me really was at the beginning, racing with the guy who's leading this championship, because I've never been able to really stay close to him. That was good fun. And then the rest of the race, honestly, as you've seen in the video, it really, really, really pushed me. Probably one of the most fun races I've had, not just in sim racing, but in karting for a long, long, long time. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like to subscribe if you like the karting stuff. If you've got any questions about karting, let me know in the comments. I don't go as much as I used to, but it'd be good to come back. And yeah, always fun to do these videos. There's some more around the screen here if you want to see them. But otherwise, see you next time.